Where you have trade, you have money. This became a very, very wealthy city. You can see this in the stunning architecture, but I wonder if you can see the wealth reflected in their bakes. I've arranged to meet food writer Luke Horney. He reviews and researches Antwerp gastronomy. Luke. Oh, nice to meet you, buddy. One of his favorite places is Goosen's, the oldest bakery in Antwerp. History of a city for me lies in two things, pubs and bakeries. <laughs> Man after my own heart. Yeah, since it's too early to go to a pub, yeah. bakery's a second choice. Baking's always my first choice. I tell you what, it's crowded, isn't it? It's always crowded. This place is always crowded. That's a good sign, no? It is a good sign. It means that the stuff in here is pretty good. This delightful place has been in the same family since 1884. Along with their more modern European bakes, there are a few unusual ones I've never seen before. One of the things here that they do is an Alcazar, which is in fact an ancient recipe based on frangipan and, and pineapple. In those days, it was quite a, quite a thing to get pineapples over here. So this is due to the port and all the, all the trade that was going on. You've got pastry. Yeah. It could be a jam, and it looks like frangipan. It's African. Jam, yeah. and then you have pineapples yeah. in there as well. This is, this is a pastry which has been made for centuries. Mm. It's delicious, though. The almonds in there, the frangipan, are fantastic. I like that a lot. It was destined for the rich mm. at that day to show off. And there's another fancy loaf that's caught my eye. What is this? A rogo for dumake. The little, little translation is bread for the damned because people who were damned or who were poor, they got slices of this from the rich. But you're gonna, you're gonna order one of those breads. Right. It's called a rogo for dumake. Say that Let's, again? A rogo for dumake. Can I order a rofa for dukenen? Well, I think you mean this. <laughs> That's the one, yeah. <laughs> you, he you speaks well. English, he's yeah. absolutely fine. In the 17th century, the wealthy were so rich, they could afford to give away expensive loaves like this one. Okay, so that's a cross section of it. See all the raisins in it. That tight structure is a real indication that it's a rye bread. Yep. When you've got raisins in a loaf like that, the flavor and the moisture that it carries to the bread is fantastic. It's a great loaf. I'd have that everyday taste with a little bit of butter. Now what's this one? This, this, is, this is even richer. It's, um, it contains more yeast, it's lighter. Oh yeah. But it's full of candied fruit. Candy, again, that's candied showing fruit. off money. And this is called the... Uh, Sukkot. Yeah. Sukkot. Tender, suckable. It's like a panettone meets a brioche. Yeah. That's what it's like. It's got really soft dough. The flavor of the citrus comes through. It's rich, it's sugary but it's also got a little bit of a bite to it as well, that little bit of bitterness that comes from the, the fruit, the citrus in there. There's nothing cheap in that. No. 